Thursday, July 9th, a very hot and muggy one. Welcome to the COVID-19 Task Force Daily Update. I'm Joe Delrone. Uh, lots to report on today. We have uh, three guests. First, we'll start with uh, Arnold Lazar from the uh, COVID-19 Task Force. Then we'll have uh, Frank, Frankie McCumber from the Mohawk Council of Ganawaga. And then Lisa Westaway will be our keynote speaker today. There is plenty, so pay attention. We'll start with Arnold. Yeah, well, Joe, uh, as he mentioned, uh, today was a very busy day in the uh, task force office. Uh, I'd like to begin by uh, formally announcing that uh, due to the events south of the border and more recently the events closer to Gunawage, the task force requested uh, an extension of uh, the state of emergency for 30 days. Uh, it's been mentioned uh, many times that uh, we're in a novel period. We don't know what's going to exactly happen. Uh, operationally, not much is going to change. Uh, we are still looking at the phases. Um, so uh, we have uh, a new date uh, extended to August 21st. Once again, uh, not much will change other than uh, we're going to be on the same path. Uh, having said that, um, we've adjusted the schedule. Uh, while the uh, bars and gyms were uh, considering uh, the 21st, we decided it would be better to delay it by a few weeks to give us the opportunity to fully assess the, the implications of what was going on around us. So as a result, the new uh, tentative date, and I need to strive that that is very tentative, uh, is August 10th. Monday, August 10th will be uh, the new date. We're going to seriously look at what's happening around us. Um, also with the uh, CJEPS beginning, uh, the EXO, what was formerly known as SITSO bus service, is going to be uh, scheduled to begin on August 10th also. Um, when and if the CJEP start, we want to ensure that the students have transportation. Um, I'm going to end by saying that uh, people in Gunawagi are very uh, creative and uh, the guideline for 10 people in a home uh, is, is in effect. And, and once again, that's to keep safe, uh, people safe. Uh, we've had requests for people to say, well, if I have a event and I have 10 people in my yard and 10 people in the neighbor's yard, is that something that's gonna be allowed? That's really going against the intent of the 10 people. Uh, we're confident that if you have 20 people in two yards for the same event, that there's gonna be cross, uh, cross uh, in, in interaction. And, and that's really what we're trying to avoid. Um, as a result, the, the peacekeepers have been requested to be vigilant. Uh, we would like to remind people that this is to keep everybody safe. Uh, public uh, places are allowed 50. Uh, once again, there's been a few events that require that, but uh, uh, for, for family or for personal residences, it's 10. Um, the next uh, uh, update will be on Tuesday for Kahnawake 911, uh, and we hope people have a safe and enjoyable weekend. Nyawa. All right, thank you very much, uh, Arnold. Uh, joining us next will be Radzahayas uh, Frank McCumber, and Frank uh, has been a member of this task force uh, since the beginning. And uh, we haven't had him on too much lately, but it, he's got uh, certainly a few things to say. So let's welcome Razahayas, Frankie McCumber. Yeah, well, Joe, uh, I just want to say that the ability for us to succeed in protecting those most vulnerable, our elders and our community members, is dependent on everyone contributing to making all the measures work. Uh, the task force provides us with the information and guidance we need, but they cannot solely be responsible for keeping us all safe. Uh, it, is up, it is up to all of us, all Ganawage Rono, to do everything we can to contribute to the safety measures, to wash our hands, 
to physical distance and to wear a mask if and when needed. Beyond this, we also all need to remember that every one of us must find ways to support one, e one another, to support one another's family members, as community members, as co-workers and as leaders in taking measures when we can. Measures like physical distancing, washing your hands and supporting the work and measures being put in place by the task force. As they and we are all uh, in this together and we have one objective in mind is that's keeping Gunawagi safe. Thank you everyone, have a good evening. And now I'll go with Frank, well said. Um, there's, uh, as we uh, said at the beginning, Lisa Westaway, the Executive Director of the Cattery Memorial Hospital Centre would be uh, kind of our keynote speaker today since we have three people uh, who will be speaking and uh, we'd like to welcome her up here right now. Thank you. Uh, thanks, Frank, for that message. It's inspiring and it's a nice reminder as well. Um, I'm going to present some reminders also today uh, that are very important uh, for all of us to be aware of and to, to remember. Um, so with what, with what we see is happening around us in the Monterigie sector, so in Charigui, Mercier, uh, Leary, many of the establishments uh, have had positive COVID cases. We know of parties that have happened as well and uh, how this, hap this is creating a very big outbreak very close, close to us, close to home. Um, and uh, so with this, uh, we thought it would be an important time to give some reminders about what contact, a contact is when we need to be tested and when we should self-isolate. Um, we also have a, a particular example that is also very close to home and this is uh, in fact affecting my own family so we wanted to talk about that today. Uh, so there happen to be three uh, girls who play on a softball team, um, a, a regional softball team, so for Softball Quebec, who are from Ganawage and there is a parent from a child of that team who recently received a positive COVID-19 test result. This, uh, this, as well as many of the other situations we're seeing around us uh, recently, is causing a renewed sense of panic in the community. So we want to uh, give information so we can try to limit the panic, but we think that the caution and the renewed sense of caution is important and pertinent and that we need to keep we need to keep that sense with us so that we're careful at all times. So for this particular case, I wanted to speak about it because we've had several calls today uh, because of the fact that I do work at the hospital. So I first want to uh, make it very clear that under no circumstance would I put any anybody in the hospital at risk. Um, I do not go on inpatient, I do not see any of the residents. In fact, nobody who, any person who does not work on inpatient does not go on inpatient, so there is no contact with residents uh, unless you're a worker of that particular area. But, uh, but just to clarify that under no circumstance would I do anything to put anyone at risk at the hospital. Um, so this parent who is positive um, did not, so there's been discussion with public health, there's been discussion as well with uh, Dr. Gautier just as an extra precaution. Um, this uh, parent who is positive did not have any contact with any of the children. None of the children from this particular team, including the three children from Gunawage, they can continue to work if they're working. They, don't, they do not have to self-isolate, nor do they need to be tested. Of course, they could develop COVID from any other possible situation, and as all of us have to do, we have to monitor ourselves on a daily basis and be sure to be tested should that need uh, ever arise. But in respect to this particular situation, situation, there is no contact with the parent. Mm -hmm. This parent's daughter also plays with the other children and that daughter is negative. Um, she, the daughter, because she is in close contact with her mother, will have to self-isolate for 14 days. However, she does not have COVID-19 and she um, has not posed a risk to the other children of the team. Therefore, there is no risk to the children or to their families uh, with, 
respect to this situation and all can continue to work, including myself. So um, I just wanted to make that clear because we have had many concern calls today and we thought it important to be transparent and honest. Um, but it brings us to um, a situation that again is very important uh, with respect to everything that's happening around us because people do have, again, as I said, a renewed sense of panic. So we want to remind you of what the symptoms are of COVID-19 because should you develop symptoms, it's important that you be tested. So the symptoms are a new cough or a worsening chronic cough, um, fever or chills, difficulty breathing, a sudden lack of taste or smell without nasal congestion. So if you have any of those symptoms, any one particular symptom, you should be tested. There are other symptoms that are also related to COVID-19, such as a new onset of a headache, um, such as new onset pain, so it could be muscular, chest, abdomen, joints, um, an intense fatigue, uh, severe loss of appetite, a sore throat, um, gastrointestinal issues such as diarrhea. So if you have any of these symptoms, often we say two of those symptoms, but our testing site is very lenient with respect to testing. So if you have any of the symptoms that I've mentioned, we urge you to contact KMHC. You'll be transferred to, for testing and to have a COVID test done. And you should stay home if you have symptoms. You should not be going out. You should not be going to work. You should be staying home, keeping yourself away from other individuals. Um, now, if uh, a lot of the questions we're receiving in light of what's happening around us are uh, questions regarding should I be tested, should I stay home if I was in an establishment that had a COVID-19 case. So uh, as we've all seen around us, there's been Dairy Queen, IGA, McDonald's, uh, Grégoire, there are many different establishments just in Chattagui, close to, close to home where we, places that we frequent often, now there's Costco in Candiac, many areas that have had positive cases. Do we have, are we at risk? because we entered into those places, it's important that um, this is uh, why we talk about wearing masks and not just ourselves but other people. We wear masks to protect others um, and there are, there are very specific criteria that public health has issued with respect to isolation measures. So this document is on the KMHC website. We're also in the process of developing um, a, a, another kind of version of this document that's a little bit easier to follow but I'm going to go through it today so that you have the information. So. Just a reminder, a contact is 10 minutes or more within two meters of an individual without any protection. So if you're within two meters or just over six feet of someone for a longer period of time, for over 10 minutes, that, and that person becomes positive, and neither of you were wearing masks, so you had no protection whatsoever, then you are considered to have been in contact with a positive case. If you've been in contact with a positive case, you need to self-isolate. If you have symptoms, you need to be tested. If you don't have symptoms, you should monitor yourself daily to see if you develop symptoms while you're self-isolating. So if you have been in contact, close contact with a positive case, yes, you need to stay home. Um, if you don't have symptoms while you're staying home, many people are saying, well, I may have been in contact with someone, but I don't have any symptoms. I want to get tested. You can get tested, although we wouldn't recommend it because you're likely going to be negative. But you could develop symptoms over the course of the next 14 days from your close contact. It could take up to 14 days to develop symptoms, and you will only show a positive test potentially 48 hours before your symptoms develop. It's very, very complicated, but if you've had, this is the reason why if you have contact with a positive case, you need to self-isolate for 14 days and monitor yourself for symptoms. A negative result does not mean that you will not develop COVID-19, and that's why you have to stay home for the full 14 days. Um, if you've been in contact with a person 
who is a contact of someone who is positive, you do not need to self-isolate. You simply need to self-monitor. You are not a risk, and if you develop symptoms, then you need to be tested. So um, it's really important that um, that we that we express this and that people uh, do not panic because they were simply in an establishment that happens to have a positive case. Um, and we want to also bring back the fact that there's not a shame in ha being COVID-19 positive. Um, we're not, we are still going to be living with COVID-19 for many, many more months. And although we do not have any active cases now, and we're doing a really good job of uh, keeping the virus out of our community, um, we will probably have other positive cases moving forward. So the idea behind keeping our distance from people who do not live in our household is very pertinent because one case um, one positive case could lead to zero other positive cases or it could lead to 50 or 60 or 70 positive cases or a huge outbreak as we're seeing in the cities just around us. So it's about how we act on a day-to-day -day basis that will have an impact on possible um, possible outbreaks within the community and then uh, impacts to our most vulnerable people. So we have to be really careful about what we do when we get together with our friends, when we're having a few drinks, when we're deciding to have 10 people in our backyard and because one case could end up being 10 cases uh, and if we have a house party with 50, 60 people then it could end up being 50 or 60 people because once we're in that environment it's very very difficult to continue the self um, distancing measures. Um, so uh, we're, we're just asking that you all be very mindful. We're going to be, again, providing the information regarding isolation measures and when to be tested uh, in, a, in a version that's clear to, uh, and easy to understand. We're going to be putting that in the newspapers so that people have good reminders about when to self-isolate and when to be tested. And we'll continue to provide reminders as well in, our, in all of our uh, media campaigns and our, and our Facebook Lives. So um, thank you, and we hope you have a great weekend. And, uh, and don't panic. It's all about just being logical and thinking about the situation and having the right information so that we can, we can share that with others. Thanks. Thank you very much, Lisa, and very well said. Um, you know, over the last little while, it, uh, we got really comfortable. And when we saw this, and, and you know, if we look back to, uh, I guess it was in late March or early May when we talked about Montreal being hit with uh, so many cases, we, we commented about how it's right over there. It's, you, we can see Montreal. Well, Chattagee's a little closer, so, you know, maybe that's why people have gotten some new panic. But uh, it really is about following the directives. We've, um, we've been very fortunate. So there will be some more uh, information coming out tomorrow. The uh, COVID-19 task force is recommending, making some recommendations tomorrow regarding masks. Uh, they're going to recommend that, you know, people wear them when you're out there uh, shopping and, and make it a stronger recommendation. And as Lisa said, there will be more information coming. So uh, stay the course, everybody. Please do. Remember, also stay clean, stay apart. And if you're not feeling well, stay home, and uh, we'll, we will get through this. And, and again, we're still in the first phase of this. Even though uh, there was a bit of a drop-off, this is not considered the second wave. You know, so let's, uh, let's all just uh, do the right thing and take care of ourselves. Speaking of taking care, remember, if uh, it's really going to be it's hot today. Uh, looking at a little hotter tomorrow, and if uh, there's any elders out there watching right now and you have uh, no air conditioning and your family's not around, you can, uh, there is a place uh, for you to uh, cool off, the White House over at, uh, right next to the council office. If you need to go there, you can call Sigurti at the Kenhas Community Services at 450-632-6880, and they can put you up there uh, for the day, just to call the uh, the person answering the phone there will, will give you all the information you need. Um, so take care of yourselves. And before we leave, just like to say happy birthday. His birthday is tomorrow. Our good friend, 
Buddy Goodleaf. Take care, everybody. We shall see you next time. Our next report will be coming up next Tuesday. Nyao ko adano onigiwahin.